exciting trend of pulmonary medicine in 2023. Earlier ability to diagnose lung cancer. Robotic bronchoscopy has been a hot topic in pulmonary medicine in the past two or three years because its ability to reach smaller lesion has been amazing. This ability first and foremost comes from the stability of the scope to stay in shape to ensure precision of the biopsy. In addition, the new design of smaller size bronchoscope allows the bronchoscope to reach to peripheral area of the lung. In 2023, we will see robotic bronchoscopy used with multiple advanced imaging in the diagnosis of lung cancer. Diagnostic yield with robotic bronchoscopy with or without advanced imaging has reached to 80 to 90 percent of diagnostic yield with ability to reach at least to ninth generation airway. Retrospective studies has also shown or suggested that robotic bronchoscopy also reached the diagnostic yield as high as transthoracic CD guided lung biopsy with significant lower complication rate, including pneumothorax and bleeding. This may lead to shortened diagnosis and staging time and time to treatment of early stage lung cancer. And more and more studies are coming out for robotic bronchoscopy, so there will be more data on safety of robotic bronchoscopy on a larger scale. I also expect more data to be published on advanced imaging study for robotic bronchoscopy. Next up is advances in COPD. Endobronchial treatment for COPD has been one of the newest advances in COPD management. 2023 will be the year for more studies to come out on increased the eligibility for the patients for this kind of treatment. Earlier studies have shown that lung volume reduction procedure has shown to improve respiratory mechanics for patients with COPD. As you can see, the lung on the left-hand side is hyperinflated with emphysema dust disease. The recoil ability of this left side lung is damaged and so it's difficult for a more forceful breast. The treatment idea is to place an endobronchial valve to close that area of the lung that was emphysematous. This would allow for other part of the lung that is healthier to re-expand and improving lung function and quality of life. Studies have shown that for patients with COPD with certain limitations, endobronchial valve treatment has significantly improved their functional status and FEV1 or lung function. The dilemma here is that not all the patients are candidates for the treatment as only 20% of patients can be a potential candidate. One of the main reasons why the patient is not a candidate is when collateral ventilation or connection between the lobes of the lung are present. The idea of the new treatment is to selectively instill adhesive into the airway with collateral ventilation to collapse the collateral ventilation. There have been a few studies in the past suggesting of possible benefits. This is one of the controlled trials showing possible benefits in patients with incomplete fissure. Although the numbers of the patients involved is still very little, there is significant improvement in lung function test and six-minute walk test observed in both groups. The group with collateral ventilation and the group without collateral ventilation. There is an ongoing converse trial for this topic with promising results initially. We will see more of the results soon. last exciting stop for pulmonary medicine is intratumoral immunotherapy treatment. As you know, the immune system plays a very important role in the cancer treatment. One of the applications for this is the injection of um, herpes simplex 1 modified oncolytic virus into unresectable lymph melanoma. In patients with lung cancer, Oncolytic viral therapy has provided some promising results for um, unresectable stage 3 and stage 4 lung cancer patients in combination with immunotherapy. CAN2409 is one of the new 
uh, oncolytic viral therapy, um, which is a replication deficient adenovirus that delivers herpes simplex viral thiamine kinase in combination with gangcyclovir or valacyclovir into a toxic metabolite. Um, this leads to immunogenic cell death and followed by local immune response. Interestingly, this local immune response will uh, turn into a systemic immune response against not only the injected tumor, but it's also uninjected distant metastasis. Phase 2 trial for this new treatment has been undertaken, which proved safety and efficacy for patients with uh, stage 3 and 4 um, non-small cell lung cancer um, that progressed um, after previous anti-PD-1 therapy. Let's wait until more data coming out for this exciting treatment. Local cancer treatments, local tissue ablation with the help of robotic bronchoscopy um, precision to get to the peripheral lung nodule it has been a very um, hot and tempting topic and hopefully after 2023 we would have more data in this kind of treatment. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.